Hello everyone, how is it going? So today we are looking into lane detection using OpenCV. In the description below, you'll find the Colab link, which is the source code, and you can simply run it on your browser. And you can also download that code or the whole GitHub repository if you want to run it on your desktop using your own webcam or dash cam videos. So coming down to the GitHub, so this is the, the gentleman, and uh, he basically open sourced this code. It's a very nice code. I mean, among all the other lane detection codes that I've seen, this has made things very easy to understand. And he has gone through all the basics. He has also taken up all the best practices, for especially for lane detection perspective. So if you come down to the code, and this is the collab file that you can open up in a browser. And uh, the first thing is you want to run this code, and it will download all these repository files. And this is basically the code which is coming from his repo. Now, I, I, I made a few things in uh, reference to the code right here, this one. So by, there are a few changes that we had to do in order for it to run nicely with the Colab file. But uh, it should, I mean, the same thing should also run for you if you're running it on your desktop. But uh, nevertheless, let's look into the code. So there are basically four or five things that are happening in this particular code. And if, if you just simply run this, It'll ask you the video that you want to upload. So yeah, in the if you go back to the folder and under the advanced lane lines, so it, this folder will pop up once you run the clone repository, and it'll take care of this. So coming down here, uh, in fact, let me refresh the runtime. So if I say factory reset, it'll basically reset everything, and it'll be brand new as if you guys were opening it. So let me show you what it, what happens. Now, if you run this code right now, this particular uh, directory is zero. There is nothing in it because we have we don't have anything put up here. Now, if I run this, it will clone the repository and it will create this folder called advanced lane lines for us. And it's basically copying the whole repo for us. In a few seconds, it should be all done. And if we open this folder, there are some videos like the challenge video, the harder challenge video, the project video. So these are all .mp4 files, which the uh, the author of this repo he had taken, and he was kind enough to uh, share it with everyone. So he uh, it's basically the video of all the lanes, the video which you saw in the beginning. So and it's able to describe where the output is and uh, able to give out the whole lane for us. So coming here, if you just replace this video with whatever you video you want, of course, you would have to upload it. You'll have to come here to this folder and click over here and upload the video which you want to run or test the system on. If not, you can always choose from one of the two, three videos that are available here, like the project video. Just type the name of this video here and uh, .mp4. And this output.mp4 is the output format or the name of the format or name of the file that will be generated once the application is run. So if, if I were to run this, basically, it will create an output.mp4 file for us. Uh, it should pop up any minute right now. And it will give us, and once it's done, once the loading is done, once all the videos run, you can simply download it from here. So it's still, is it ready? No, we don't see it. Maybe if you refresh this, close it and open it back again, you can see there is this output.mp4 value. Right now it's only 457 KB, but if you download this, once it's done, you can simply download and see what the output is. But with, uh, we're not concerned about that right now. Let's look into the code. Let's, what is ha let's see what is happening. So there are basically these four or five things that are uh, the crucial aspect of the whole application. The first thing is camera calibration. And camera calibration is a function. It's, uh, it's a system that is allowed that allows us to remove any errors in the video that can occur because of the camera irregularities. When I know, what do I mean by that? So I have this video, uh, page opened up here. It's uh, from the OpenCV camera calibration page. So if you look, just look into Google and uh, look for OpenCV camera calibration and the docs folder of OpenCV, you'll get this page. Now, what is happening is, if you notice this chess chessboard and uh, refer to this red lines, 
So even though it's one image, even though it's one frame, you can see this red line, which is basically connecting the two corners of the, these two block, uh, the chess pieces. You can see that the red line is not crossing through everyone as it should have been. So it's basically telling you that there's this some sort of distortion that is happening in the image. And uh, similarly, at the same, when you look into the vertical aspect, you can still see that some of some places the line is crossing the black box more often than uh, than the ones on the corners. But there is some sort of distortion that is happening, and that's not good because this can cause errors in your, uh, especially if you're using it for your self-driving purposes where you're trying to control a vehicle. And any small errors like this can cause bigger problems in with respect to controlling a machine. So you want to be careful about that. And for that purpose, we use a calibration and OpenCV has this calibration system. It, it has its own calibration function and it basically looks into the corners of the chess pieces. So uh, you have these chess pieces and chess, chess pieces is a very good uh, system, a very good image for us to use in order for to uh, calibrate. And the author had, for the camera that he used, he provided a camera calibration folder which has all the images of the chessboard pieces that he took. And uh, this, uh, so it's the same camera that he used to record the lane detection. And that has allowed him to control the calibration aspect for the camera. So it looks into the corners of these and tries to maintain uh, the, the perspective of the image in the right, uh, in the right uh, calibration. So it basically understands what the calibration means. Now, once you're done with uh, the calibration, the second step is thresholding and thresholding is nothing but filtering, filtering out and so that that way you can emphasize the region that is more important for you. So thresholding, uh, OpenCV has this very nice image. So look at this image. This is the original image and it's a gradient image. Uh, it's starting from the white, white section from here and going all the way here, which makes it darker gradually. Now, if you were to give out a threshold and say, okay, uh, anything beyond this line, anything beyond this pixel should be black and anything uh, before this pixel should be white. But that threshold, that central line between the image is what is causing the, uh, is what is filtering it all about, thresholding all about. And if you give that uh, section or if you give that mark or filter value and say, okay, anything before this is zero, anything after that is one. So it basically makes an image black and white. Uh, it uh, it converts uh, anything below the pixel values in one color and the other in other colors. So it basically uh, differentiates between the or filters all the pixel values based on what we want. And the best use of that is to emphasize on some information that is important for us. So if you notice this particular image here with uh, with the Sudoku box, you can see there are, it it has a lot of information. The gray color the font and all this information that is available here is not so much of concern for us and we are we are more interested in the boxes and the numbers available here and you can see these numbers in the boxes are a little bit different compared to the, uh, the text that is written here the images that are available here the color of the page so everything is different and you can change that by using thresholding and by using thresholding, you can remove all the unnecessary information that is available and just emphasize on the portion that you are interested in. You can see this particular thresholded image. Uh, it's a different type of thresholding, uh, which is not so much of concern right now, but I, as long as we understand what thresholding is, that's good enough for this video. So this is, you, you can see that it's able to emphasize the content of the, the image and then basically, uh, embossing or giving out more information about what is important and in our case it's the boxes and the numbers so with that that's where thresholding helps and uh, in our case uh, when we're doing lane detection we want to emphasize only on the regions the way the lanes are available and for that purpose we use thresholding the next purpose uh, the next thing thing he's going to do is perspective transformation. And this is a very interesting phenomena as well. Uh, if you come down to this image, I think uh, if I go just Google perspective transform, there are some very nice images that help un understand what is this all about. So this is a very good image. If I open this up, I think it's from the Pi Image Search website. So you can see this card, which is uh, basically present over here on the ground. And you can see the uh, way it's laid down. The edges of this side is smaller than the edges of this side, even though it's a 
uh, it's a solid rectangle of same breadth and same width. But since it's available, uh, since it's present or since it's kept in such a way, and if you're taking the camera image, it looks as though the size of these two boxes, see these two sides are different. But if you use perspective transformation, you can, you can basically pick it up and uh, uh, place it over here so that it looks, you know, you're just uh, concentrating on the information and not reflecting it with respect to the background. So what I mean by that is it's able to remove the issues, remove the errors that are occurring with the distances, with the perspection. So the way you, because the way you perceive or the, the way you're uh, having your perspective vision, that can distort the image. And to remove that, you're using this perspective transform where that can help us make the image more regular size. So coming down here, I mean, the, these images are very good in understanding. You can see that it looks like a trapezoid where the uh, edge, this is a smaller edge compared to this one. But if you if you were to use the perspective transform, you can basically look at the size and the, it's various making the size of the other side of the image same as well. So that that's what uh, perspective transform is uh, all about. Now, coming back to lean lines, so this is the last function and this is the, one of the most important functions. This is where you're detecting the lanes and detecting the lines. And then there are other functions, uh, other uh, functions available in this program where uh, it's they're uh, able to differentiate where the direction is going, whether it's going left or right. And based on those images, they, they are able to give out, give out those instructions for the machine. Now, coming down to lane lines, so this is a very interesting one. Uh, if you look into the, uh, if you look at a lane from a car's perspective, so if, imagine the car had uh, some eyes and it has the headlight, uh, basically a dash cam, you know, for example. And if you open up this image, for example, and you can see uh, that. Let me open up this. Yeah, you can see that this image of a lane it has this uh, the lanes that are available, or you can the lanes that the car is able to see it's on the lower half of the image, right? The upper half has the sky and all this other information, which is not important for us as long as, I mean, for self-driving purpose, you're only interested in the lane you know, and where the lanes are going. And for that purpose, you can neglect all the information which is on the top and just concentrate on what is available in the bottom. So if you are doing lane detection and if you're able to, uh, if you're trying to detect all the lines that are available in the image, you want to uh, maybe crop the image from the lower half. So you're not interested in the top half, and that's where uh, some of the function of the lane lines is being done in this project. And once the upper portion is removed, you can then only focus on the lanes or the lines that are available at the bottom. And uh, in order for us to detect the lines, you have two other functions. One is the canny edge detection, and the canny edge detection is right here where you can see that uh, it's able to detect it's uh, so for example open up uh, one of the images right here where you can see this person and this is the image it's a grayscale image and it's able to identify the outer edges of a person of the uh, person and then also after doing some sort of uh, noise removal which is you know it, uh, these are called as morphological operations uh, no need to get confused right now. Basically, you're just removing some noise pixels that are not important. You, and then just emphasizing on what is important. So you can see the tie over here. It had all these textures, which was also being detected. But you know, we were only interested in the outer edge of the, of the tie. And for that purpose, you can simply erode all the unnecessary information. And that's what the canny edge detection is all about. Uh, once you do the canny edge detection, then there is another application called as Hogue or who transform, I'm not sure how it's exactly called, but uh, this who transformation, it's able to identify from a basically, a basic, you know, if you look into these lines, and uh, it's able to see from these lines, there are different types of lines, but the who transformation is able to identify and, uh, uh, and detect a straight line from a given set of uh, edge directions. So it's able to, Take an image which has all these edges, but come up with a, it, it's, it's kind of a machine learning approach, but so the, what it does is it takes the edges, it takes all these edges, and then try to identify 
a line based on some of the parameters that you can give. Basically, if you say, okay, there is, if there is an edge of so-and-so length, yes, that is the edge that I am interested in. And if there is an edge maybe of so-and-so curvature, yes, that is the edge that I am interested in. Rest all, I am not interested in. So that's where some of the who transformation application comes in. So you can see here different different types of lanes and uh, even in uh, lane detection, how you can uh, basically emphasize or basically uh, take out and uh, you know, eliminate all the other noise pixels here. So you, you can see all of these are images, all of these are edges, but you are only interested in the edge that is representing the lane of the road. And for that purpose, you, you're using something called as who transformation, where it can uh, only, only concentrate on the edge that you specify. Maybe you can say that, okay, uh, I'm interested in the edge, which could be of so-and-so length, or it could be of so-and-so, it could be a, a, at a different set of set angle. So th those are some of the features that you can specify, and then who transformation can help you only extract that particular edge. So with that, uh, we basically run into lane detection. And with all that, we can simply take care of the lane detection for us. So uh, with that, I mean, this was not, not, not more into the coding aspect, but more about understanding and the theory behind lane detection. Hope it helps uh, someone understanding the phenomena. And yeah, I mean, uh, if you're just uh, looking to run the code, you can uh, copy the same thing and just run and it'll take care of it for you. With that, we come to the conclusion of this video. If you guys liked it, please let me know. And if uh, let me know what kind of other projects that you are working on or what kind of projects you want me to work on. And if it's something interesting, and yeah, let's, let's get into it. With that, you guys take care, stay safe, bye-bye.